Welcome. Welcome to you all. We are excited you have joined us again today. Last week we gathered here in the courtyard and others joined us online. We are glad that you were able to join us regardless. But as we gather today, we are going back to our normal uh, or semi-normal way of doing things. We are in in-house today, this Sunday, and then next month we'll be announcing a date when we'll be back in the courtyard. Uh, thank you for joining us, and the call to worship today uh, says, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. We are called to be peacemakers, to stand against injustice, inequality, and oppression, for injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So what do we bring before the Lord today? We bring our hopes and our dreams to the Lord. What do we seek today? We seek peace for our weary souls. We will find peace in this place during this gathering of God's people. We open our hearts and our spirits, O oh Lord, to hear your words and, and for comfort and for you to bless us with your peace and your presence. We begin our worship this morning with a song played by the Pasadena Tabernacle Band entitled Spirit of God Descend. It was arranged by Harold Bergmeier. The words say, Spirit of God descend upon my heart. We in it from earth through all its pulses move. Stoop to my weakness, might as thou art, and make me love thee 
as I ought to love. Be blessed as we begin this service listening to the Pasadena Tabernacle Band. that at least I have the opportunity to share with you online. Uh, some fun things are happening at our core. Sarah Stilson is busy planning a virtual harvest party, which should be a lot of fun, and she's going to provide some details with us uh, about that in a minute. Um, there's some prayer requests that I wanted to share with you. Uh, we learned um, a, a, a couple of weeks ago about the promotion to glory of Jeff Kerno, and I know that we're going to want to remember Barbara, his wife, and his family uh, in our prayers this week. We're also going to want to remember Gary Kyle in our prayers. Gary uh, is now on hospice, and I'm sure that Gary would really appreciate our prayers at this time. Other prayer requests are noted in the bulletin that Captain Terry sends out each and every week, and I know that those prayer requests are prayed for. I just want to encourage you in these times that might seem isolate, isolating to reach out to others. Um, sometimes you might feel like, oh, I don't know if I should. And my motto is when in doubt, lean in. 
when in doubt, reach out. Uh, err on the side of, of reaching out to others. So let's uh, come to God now in prayer. Please join me. Dear Lord, I know that there are many among us who are feeling the storms of life. I think especially of the family of Jeff Kerno. We think especially of Barbara. And I pray that you be with them in this time of grief. Lord, we think of Gary Kyle and we ask that you be with him and his family as he enters this different uh, time. Lord, other prayer requests are noted. Many, many among us, among our church family are struggling. And in some ways it feels like our world is in a bit of a storm right now. In these times, Lord, help us to be still. Help us to listen to your still small voice and help us to find peace, Lord. Help us to find peace in our world and peace in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for your presence and thank you that we can always draw you near. We ask these things in your name, amen. Hey friends, I have an exciting announcement for you about our virtual harvest party that's happening next Sunday, October 25th at 1 p.m. on Zoom. This week, get together with your family and decide on a design for your pumpkin, carve your pumpkin as a family and send the picture of your pumpkin with your family to me and we'll put them together in a slideshow for us all to see and there will be prizes for different categories. Also, we want to see all the kids in their costumes and maybe some of the adults no scary costumes though, and send them to me and we'll put them together in a slideshow and have a parade of costumes. There's plenty of games and fun activities that we have planned for all ages. So please next Sunday after the service, grab some lunch with your family and then come on Zoom and join us for our virtual harvest party. See you then. We continue with our worship this morning. The song is a reminder, song number 982 to stand up, to stand up for Jesus. And I would like to read verse number three. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own, but instead put on salvation armor and watching as you pray. We'll sing just the two verses, verse one and verse three. Hey kids, and welcome to Kids Space. Today we're talking about peace. Now something that reminds me of peace is a sunflower. Sunflowers look like just one big flower. Sometimes they're even bigger than this. But you see, in the center, it's actually hundreds if not thousands of little tiny flowers neatly arranged side by side. This can remind us that we too can live side by side in peace. Another thing about sunflowers is that they turn towards the sun while they are growing and each one can contain one to 2,000 seeds that can then be planted to produce more sunflowers. So you see, if we ask God for help and turn towards Him, we can produce seeds 
of peace that we can then spread around the world. Hello and good morning, Tab family. It's a pleasure for me to be sharing the scripture reading with you this morning. I will be reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Again, that's Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. And I'll be reading from the NIV version. The Sermon on the Mount, verse 1. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is God's word. We accept it and we believe it today. God bless you.
Well, thank you to the Pasadena Tabernacle Songsters for that wonderful song piece. As you can tell from the theme today is peace. We continue our study of the Beatitudes. Uh, as I've been saying over the last few weeks, the Beatitudes are the words of Jesus where he was teaching life's virtues that lead to holiness. They are eight Beatitudes. The Beatitudes, when Jesus said them, they were revolutionary teachings then, and they are still revolutionary teachings today. They are found in Matthew chapter 5, uh, verses 1 to 12, although uh, the whole part of that sermon is called Sermon on the Mount, which is found in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Last week, we talked about blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God, which is verse 8. Today we are in verse 9 of Matthew chapter 5, which says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Over the last few weeks, I've been defining as well the word blessed. Uh, I just want to remind you a recap of the word blessed is that it means to be spiritually prosperous, independent of the circumstances, because it is a state bestowed upon you by God. To be blessed is to have the spiritual favor of God on you. It, to be blessed is to have things go well for you spiritually. Today, the Bible is teaching us that blessed are peacemakers, are those who sow peace where there is strife, those who pursue peace where there is conflicts. Well, strife and conflicts are part of life, right? In, in this fallen world, conflicts are bound to happen every day. Maybe as I speak, some of you are in conflict with somebody right now, or you came from conflict or you're heading towards conflict. There'll be times where there'll be conflict in your family. There'll be times where there'll be conflict amongst friends. There'll be times where there's conflict uh, at work, at school, wherever you are, even in politics there's conflict, even between countries there's, pol there, there's conflict, there's conflict even between races and nations. Conflict is part of life. The Bible though asks in John, James 4 verse 1, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? It means, therefore, that even for us as Christians, we experience conflict and strife from amongst ourselves. We see conflict every day. When you turn on the news, you see conflict. When you are browsing through the internet, you see conflict. You see conflict in personal relationships. On social media pages, we see conflict. Conflict is everywhere. Conflict can be difficult to handle if it's unresolved. Christians are not exempt to conflict. Even in church, there is conflict. But in all of this, Jesus was teaching that blessed are those who pursue to uh, eradicate conflict amongst themselves. It takes peacemakers to pursue and to fight for peace for everybody. So it's important for us, before we go any further this morning, to define what peace is. The Webster Dictionary defines peace as a state of tranquility or quiet. It goes on to say it is freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts or emotions, harmony in personal, lack of harmony in personal relationships. I continue also to say that peace is godly contentment in spite of our circumstances. In the deepest sense, these graces come from God and lead us back to him. Peace is therefore the binding or joining together again of something that had been separated by strife. Peace is the opposite of division, of strife, of dissension. Peace is a state of harmony. Peace is the opposite of fighting or of war. Peace implies a well-being that is restored when it is lost due to strife. When the Spirit bears the fruit of peace in us, the Holy Spirit brings an inner tranquility of our soul, an inner quietness in the midst of adversity. 
Jesus addressing his disciples just before he went to the cross, he said this in John 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, nor let it be fearful. So the peace that Jesus gives is different from worldly peace. He gives a peace that, that gives calmness in the midst of strife. Peace is a state of being untroubled and undisturbed despite the outside circumstances. Peace is not the absence of problems. Peace is knowing that everything is good in God's hands. Peace is knowing that God is everything under control. We are therefore asked today by Jesus' words, blessed are the, those who seek peace, are people who are ready to dispense peace to our environment wherever we are. If we cannot be peacemakers, we must at least try not be peace breakers. So, I didn't actually know that this phrase or word, if we join them, peace breaker, is actually defined in the Oxford Dictionary. A peace breaker is a person who violates peace or stirs up strife. A disputatious or quarrelsome person, a person who commits a breach of the peace, a violator of public order. So I want to say that a peace breaker is somebody who seeks to incite violence and discord. A peace breaker is somebody who speaks at the wrong time to the wrong people at the wrong place. Peace, a peace breaker is somebody who thrives in sowing discord amongst people who love each other. A peace breaker doesn't tolerate forgiveness, doesn't accept or embrace forgiveness, and never lets go of a problem. Peace breakers are everywhere. I want to warn you, peace breakers can be found in your family. Uh, this Thanksgiving, when you are sitting down for a big dinner, uh, a peace breaker will be there to uh, let out a family secret in front of everyone or just cause some problems. The peace breakers can be found at your work, stirring up rumors and starting untruths so that people can rise up against you. You can find peace breakers in church, uh, creating gossip, slander, and discord. You can find peace breakers at school, causing fights between friends. You can find peace breakers today when you go to the grocery store, on the bus, on the train. Peace breakers are everywhere. But Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers. I want to teach this morning about the importance of being a peacemaker. What is a peacemaker? A peacemaker is a person who seeks to present peace instead of war. The word peace, peacemaker is actually in Greek, the word Irene. So if you know people called Irene, they are supposed to be peacemakers. Irene signifies a harmonious relationship and is not merely the absence of war. Irene signifies parties or people uh, holding differences of opinion who are willing to turn toward each other and embrace one, embrace one another despite their differences. Charles Spurgeon once said this of Irene, of peacemakers. It is those people who are always seeking to end a quarrel if they can. Irene are people who are, who are willing to lay themselves out to prevent discord amongst people. William Barclay, on his, in his commentary on this, stated, it must be noticed that Christ doesn't say, blessed are those who love peace. But Jesus said, blessed are those who are peacemakers. Everybody can love the concept of peace, but very few people are willing to work actively towards creating real lasting peace. Peacemakers strive to bring peace to bring the peace of God to people, to bring peace amongst people, and to bring peace on people, on themselves. So let me talk a little bit about peace with God. Peacemakers are people who, have, who are at peace with God. They've mended their relationship with God. You see, sin creates a, a rift between you and God. Sin creates this barrier between people and God. So when you are a peacemaker, you are somebody 
who has created peace between you and God. What that means is that when we are going along with our sin, when we are living in sin, we become enemies of God. But when we give our lives over to God and say, Christ, be in my heart, be my, my guide, my leader, be everything in me, we are creating peace, we are reconciling ourselves to God. And in that sense, we, we are at peace with God. So peacemakers are at peace with God, but also they work hard to bring peace between people and God, which means that peacemakers are people who go and preach the gospel so that people can be reconciled to God. Peacemakers bring peace between people and God. I want to say this to you this morning, that peacemakers are people who devote themselves to sharing uh, the message of God with others. You can be a peacemaker. You can have a relationship with God and have that peace between you and God. But you don't stop there. You can also bring peace between your family members, your friends, your workmates, people you come into contact. You can create peace between them and God. God, because when they know God, they know peace. And I want to say if there is no knowledge of God, there's no peace. So it's important that you tell your kids, you teach your grandkids, you teach your siblings or people around you the importance of mending their relationship with God so that they can be at peace with God. I want to tell you there's nothing as difficult as being at war with God. We need to give up the fight they, people need to give up the fight against God because they are never going to win fighting against the almighty God. They need to put down their armor and say, God, I surrender to you and give their lives to God. Only then can they experience peace. When you don't have peace with God, your life is in turmoil. You cannot sleep. You cannot live well. You keep doing things and they are just not working right because you, you have a sense in you that things are not right between you and God. You, everybody you meet is created with a God vacuum, with a space that only God can fill. And if God doesn't feel that, there's no peace because people will live day after day, year after year, decade after decade, running around seeking something to fill that gap. And there's no peace until Jesus sits in that gap. So I want to remind you the value and the importance of you having peace with God, but your family members, people around you, everybody you know to have peace with God. That's why I'm a preacher, is to preach that the gospel says that people need to be reconciled to God. Anyone hearing me here right now, you need to give your life over to Christ. But you need to tell people around you to give their lives over to God so they can have peace with God. The second kind of peace that the peacemakers bring is the peace between people themselves. So peacemakers are people who live at peace with one another, with people around them. And then they go around and teach people to live at peace with each other. Some years ago, when I was at training school, uh, there were uh, fellow cadets who were fighting and they were sending nasty emails back and forth while they were CCing everyone else. So one of my friends who was in a session ahead of us, uh, Tom Fenton, I remember he just wrote an email to everybody with one word on it, and that word was grace. And immediately the fighting stopped. And later on when I talked with Tom, he said there was no grace in the way people were talking with each other. So when I sent that, I was praying that it would have an impact, and it did. It stopped the fighting right away. So peacemakers are people who bring peace wherever they go. Romans 12, 18 says, if possible, so far as it is it, uh, dependent on you, live in peace. Live in peace with all people. If possible, so far as it, it it depends on you, live in peace with all people. It's important for us to know that we need to be reconciled to God, but we need to have a reconciliation amongst us. Uh, peacemakers are people who have sought forgiveness for the things they've done, but who have forgiven people who have hurt them. They have sought reconciliation on all relationships that are not working. God is in the process of 
uh, restoring broken relationships, of reconciling people who have gone estranged. God wants all people to live in peace everywhere. So peacemakers are people who go around and just dispense peace. They go around and dispense forgiveness and they receive the same. And we should know the challenge today is that blessed are the peacemakers means blessed are people in our core, people in our families, in our work environments who go around and just give peace. Where people are fighting, they just say grace. Where people are in disagreement, they teach forgiveness. They teach people to bless others, not to curse others. They teach people to be humble enough to ask for forgiveness and to receive forgiveness. Romans 14, 19 says, Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. I want to challenge us today. If you are seeing people around you fighting, pray and go and sow peace. Make sure that you pursue peace so that people around you can live well together. Because we, you and I have been reconciled to God, it is our duty to make sure that we reconcile each other, or each person to each other. Abraham Lincoln once said, Die when I may. I would like it to be said of me that I always pulled up weeds and planted flowers where I thought flowers would grow. Die when I may. I would like it to be said of me that I always pulled up weeds and planted flowers where I thought flowers would grow. If you and I were to say the statement, can we truly say that if we were to die, we want people to remember us for having pulled out the weeds of discord and planted the beautiful flowers of peace. Wherever you are, plant peace. But also peacemakers are at peace with themselves. What this means is that many of us are at peace with God, are at peace with others, but struggle with forgiving ourselves. There are many of us who carry guilt wherever we go. I knew a lady way back when I was growing up at High Food Temple, uh, the Salvation Army Corps I grew up at. Every time she stood up, she testified of how God had forgiven her and she would talk about all the sins she went through. But this was 10, 15, 20 years later, and she still talked as if it had just happened. And somebody went to her and said, we know God forgave you, but it's important that you also forgive yourself. Because she carried around guilt, and she could not overcome the guilt conscience that she carried with herself. People that she had hurt had forgiven her. God whom she had hurt had forgiven her, but she had struggled to forgive herself. And it was liberating for her to hear those words and to be able to forgive herself. There are some people here who went away and did drugs, who went away and did things that hurt their parents, they hurt their loved ones, they hurt their spouses, their kids, and you are sitting here listening and you're carrying this guilt of the sins of the things you have done. I want to tell you this, that if God has forgiven you, who are you not to forgive yourself? You need to forgive yourself, you need to allow God to heal you, to heal, to put together the broken pieces of your life so you can move on. It's important that you are at peace with yourself. Be at peace with God, be at peace with everybody, but be at peace with yourself. Get rid of the guilt and the self-condemnation. You see, peacemakers also remind us the value of letting go of our guilt. Peacemakers know that he whom the Son of God has set free is free indeed. You have been set free. You are free indeed. If you have asked for forgiveness and God has forgiven you, you don't need to keep dwelling in the past. You don't have to keep reliving the problems you created for yourself. 
your victory, your moving forward is not in looking back, in living uh, in the past or looking in the rear view mirror. You need to let go of the past, of your sins, and allow God to give you the peace to move forward. You are not going to step forward into the future while you are hanging on to the past. Let go of the past, learn from it, but keep moving forward so that you can experience the freedom that this peace gives. The Bible says in Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want to remind you today that yes, you may have asked for peace between you and God. You may be working to bring Jesus to others so they may have peace with God, but you need to forgive yourself. You need to let go of the guilt. You need to be at peace with yourself. It's going to be okay. Let it go and move forward into the new future that your father has in store for you. So Captain, how can I be a peacemaker? Blessed are the peacemakers for they'll be called children of God. For you to be called a child of God, you need to be a peacemaker. But to be a peacemaker means you need to pray. You need to pray and ask God to show you, to reveal to you the areas where people are in strife. You need to pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you to where you need to be. You also need to pray for strength and boldness to be able to address the conflicts and the problems. But you also not need to pray for wisdom. You need to pray that God will tell you the right time the right words to use to bring peace. So prayer is critical in becoming a peacemaker. You cannot be a, an effective peacemaker if you don't go to the people with the Prince of Peace guiding you and leading you. The, secondly, you can be a peacemaker if you show empathy. If you are not sympathetic with people, if your heart is not tender, if you don't understand the pain of others, you cannot be a peacemaker. Peacemakers are people who exhibit mercy and empathy. Peacemakers are people who are broken by the things that break the heart of others. Peacemakers don't scream and yell and hurl insults at people who are already broken. Peacemakers are people of empathy. Thirdly, peacemakers are gentle. You cannot be a peacemaker if you have rough edges. Because sometimes, have you gone to a situation where you're trying to make things better, but you make things worse? It's because sometimes you're not gentle enough. You are too hostile for the situation. If you are going to be a peacemaker, you can't take sides. If you're going to be a peacemaker, you have to be gentle in how you handle the situation. That's why, again, it's important to have the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you. You need to be gentle in your approach. Peacemakers are patient people. You have to be patient. You cannot be a peacemaker if you give up too easily, too quickly. Because sometimes to be a peacemaker, you have to deal with me the messiness of humanity. You have to deal with frustrations of people saying things or uh, the process taking too long. Be patient if you are to be a peacemaker. A peacemaker is a patient person and peacemaking done right can be God's divine work. Peacemakers are patient. Peacemakers are good at listening. You cannot be a peacemaker if you don't listen. When you sense a conflict, your default setting should be listen. You see, because sometimes people are fighting because they are not listening to each other. Marriages break down because two people yell more than they listen. Relationships go sour because people don't listen. So as a peacemaker, you come into a situation, you come into it to listen. Because good listening quenches the darts of anger in conflicts. Good listening softens sharp blows. Good listening disarms weapons of conflict. In any setting, any relationship, when we listen well, people feel that they are valued and it disarms them. When you listen, you understand others' perspectives and it's important. Steve Covey often said, seek to understand before being understood. As a peacemaker, 
your, your goal is to understand, not to force your perspective onto people. Seek to listen before seeking to be listened to. So in conclusion, I want to remind us, Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, they'll be called the children of God. Blessed are you when you are a peacemaker. You see, this world needs more peacemakers than troublemakers. Today in our society, we need more peacemakers. We need you to be a peacemaker in your own marriage. We need you to be a peacemaker in your own family. We need you to be a peacemaker in your job. This election season, be a peacemaker. After the election results have been announced, be a peacemaker. If your party wins, be a peacemaker. If your candidate wins, be a peacemaker. If your party loses, still be a peacemaker. If your candidate loses, be a peacemaker still. Be a peacemaker this Thanksgiving. Be a peacemaker in person, but be a peacemaker online. When people write horrible comments, be a peacemaker. We need to pray the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi who said, Lord, make me an instrument of peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not as much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. I add to this prayer of St. Francis of Assisi by adding these words, teach me, Lord, to say and to live by the truth, even in the presence of uncertainty. Help me to love and respect all despite our differences. Give me strength to forgive those who have hurt me. Assist me to embrace that which stretches me to become better. Bless us as we gather and endeavor to make our community better. Make us instruments of hope, agents of peace, and heroes to men. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the teaching of Jesus in the Beatitudes and today on verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers for they'll be called the children of God. Father, we want to be peacemakers wherever we go. Help us to be peacemakers when we want to fight, when we want to express our, our, our thoughts Help us to be peacemakers when we want to uh, be hateful. Help us to be peacemakers when we think it's important to uh, perpetuate the fights that are online, that are uh, on our TVs, that are in our neighborhoods, that are in our families, and wherever we go. We pray, Father, that we may be people of God who are sensitive to the moving of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I pray for our core today. I pray for everyone listening today that they may seek to be peacemakers in their situations, in their environments, in everything they do. For through that, we will be called the children of God. And my heart aches this election season when we watch uh, the commercials on TV, when we see the hatred and the problems that are in our world today. We just pray, oh God, that your peace may be upon our country, your peace may be upon our people, your peace may be upon our congregation, your peace may be upon our families and on our lives, and help us, Father, to dispense that peace wherever we go. We love you and we thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we thank you today for joining us once again and uh, sharing in worship with us. We are going to conclude our service as we normally do by singing the benediction together. God bless you and we look forward to having you join us again next week at the same time uh, on this channel. Thank you.